All right, guys. So third question, which is actually one I kind of covered in the last question at the end, but it's how does one figure out one's niche? And it's a it's an absolute make or break question. I'm so glad you guys asked it. And the thing is, is that like I mentioned before, it's so easy to to think or fall into like the fear and the trap of I you know I, I want to make sure I cover everything, and and if I don't, you know things aren't going to work out right. I'm not going to be able to. You know, add my value and, and talk about, you know, I want to talk about travel. I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about saving money. I want to talk about career. I want to talk about meditation and health. And that's all great. But the key is to get people to listen to you at first, especially at first in the beginning, you have to build a brand around something really, really specific, a specific way of helping people with specific need. And once you do that and people have a reason for coming to you and they then know and trust you on a certain topic, an interesting thing starts to happen is that they start to trust you and come to you and, and are excited to hear from you on other types of topics. And, you know, just like I was saying at Live Your Legend, I cover a lot of different topics. I'll talk about travel. I'll talk about relationships and rapport building. And I will talk some about finance and even some about investing and things like that. But, but people come there, they're core. They come there because they want to find and do work they love. And, and that was what changed everything for my business was defining that and letting people know about that and having a specific way of telling people. Like when someone asks, like, what do you do? I say, I have a business that helps people find what they're passionate about and build a career around it. And well, usually the first response is, oh my God, I need that. <laughs> or my sister and my brother or my wife needs that. But the point is you have a specific need you're helping people with. So in terms of finding that, you really got to think about one, well, it's, it comes down to defining what I call your compass, which is, first of all, your your strengths, your talents. What are you naturally good at? What do people thank you for? And what do you love spending time on that you're really good at? And StrengthsFinder 2.0 is an awesome book and it comes with a, an online assessment, which is pure gold. I think that the book is a 10 or $12 book. comes with a free assessment and it gives you this like 20-page report. It should be $1,000. It's so useful. You with all my clients and it uh, gives you your top five strengths. And anyway, uh, highly recommend it. But you find your strengths and your talents and then you Think about what are your values, what, what matter most to you, what are the boxes you need to make sure you check in terms of what you work on, how you help people, do you value you know, integrity, family, is it success, is it money? Just make sure you know it's you and not um, someone else's definition because then we want to define what our success is to us and you know, to me it's really helping people in a unique way and, and helping inspire people to do what inspires them. And, and then understand what are your experiences, what are the things that you've done in the past that you've loved and hated, what do you have... You know, people really appreciated you doing. And when you start to realize these parts of, the, of this compass and you like overlap them, it'll start to get really specific with the areas that you can work with people on, the way you can help people. So you want to, I guess, start with the specifics of your expertise, what you're really, really good at. And then, and if there's a, n a number of different topics, you want to try and pick one or or pick a a brand or a niche that really specifically nails kind of the areas that you want to help people. I think Chris Gillibo did a very good job and clever job with the art of nonconformity because he actually talks about a lot of stuff when he talks about alternative work and you know doing things that you love, taking the road less traveled, uh, traveling around the world. But he has it under the specific topic of nonconformity. And I think you probably in general might have a, a better time in the beginning, getting going, if you had an even more specific niche than that, but he's done it in such a, a brilliant way. Um, so, but you think about just what you want to do, how you've been helping people, and what value you're willing, to, you're able to offer, and that you want to offer. Because there's a difference between what well, you might be good at, let's say, math and analytics, but you might actually not enjoy doing that. So, we want to make sure it lines up what we're good at, our skills, our talents, and then what we actually enjoy, and those passions, and and then we can define that and ideally, a, well, it's important to define it in a, in a specific but also a, a catchy and memorable type way. And I mean, that can get into naming and all that. And uh, I remember one thing I heard from Corbett Barr, it stuck with me when I was trying to name Live Your Legend, which actually was inspired by The Alchemist um, when I was reading it, I think for like the fifth time on a trip to Chile. Um, but the idea is that a, a name should be, it should be inspirational and and also be something that you can really take on and own yourself and be a, a bit descriptive but also really inspire you to kind of go on to a new level. And so um, 
you just think about, you know, how that might fit in. You don't want to make it totally random, but also not so specific or so just like loveyourjob.com. I don't know, might be a little bit too generic. Uh, so think about that, but, but really the key, I think the number one thing is to, that your niche, you want it to be as, as really focused and specific as possible. You should know how you're going to help people and be able to tell it to people and practice it when you go out. Like if people ask you what you do or what you enjoy, when you're out hanging out with friends, meeting new people, just try out different renditions. I mean, I explain what I do differently almost every time poking around. I've started to find out what connects best with people and what really, how they really relate well to things. And so now I've, I've come to really the description of I help people find what they're passionate about and build a career around it. And notice I don't say anything about a blog. I don't even say internet or anything. I just say that's what my business is based on. And it's very specific about how you're helping. So um, the more you can know about the people you're working with and and your readers and community, I mean, the more you can understand that need. And that grows over time. Your your, your niche and your um, your way of helping people will continue to evolve over time. But just start with a, a really a stake in the ground instead of trying to cover everything on the planet because there's a, a million general personal development blogs out there, but very few that help left-handed knitters from around the world or whatever random thing you want to you wanna focus on, but make it specific. Thanks, guys. Hope this has been helpful. Fun to be a part of it.